Choosing a specialty is one of the most important decisions that any future doctor makes, and even then, there's no guarantee of matching into your desired specialty. In a previous video, we covered the top 5 most competitive specialties to match into in 2022. Today, let's cover the 10 least competitive. Dr. Jabal, MedSchoolInsiders.com Matching into residency is arguably more competitive now than it has ever been. During the most recent 2022 NRMP match, there were approximately 6,400 medical students that applied for residency and went unmatched even after the Supplemental Offer and Acceptance Program, or SOAP. For perspective, that's approximately 15% of the total number of active applicants in 2022. If your dream is to match into a competitive specialty, such as plastics, ENT, or dermatology, there is a very real chance that you won't match. As such, your life becomes much easier if you apply to a less competitive specialty. We'll be using the same methods from our previous video on the top 5 most competitive specialties in 2022. We're taking into account the match rate, average step 1 score, step 2 CK score, number of publications, percentage of matriculants who are AOA, and percentage of students from a top 40 NIH funded medical school. Just like with the previous analysis, we have also added an additional weighting to each of the categories to better reflect their importance in residency admissions. The following specialties are those that ranked the lowest and are therefore the easiest to match into, relatively speaking. If you want to check the data yourself, we have an entire spreadsheet that contains all of our calculations, link in the description. With that said, here are the 10 easiest specialties to match into in 2022. Number 10 on our list is anesthesiology with a total of 40 points. This is the 15th most competitive specialty out of the 24 specialties used in our analysis. Anesthesiology is the field of medicine concerned with taking care of patients before, during, and after surgery. Think of them as the guardian angel that ensures patients get through surgery safely. To become an anesthesiologist, you must complete four years of anesthesia residency after medical school. Being one of the road specialties, anesthesiology is known for having a great lifestyle, meaning high compensation and great work life balance. The average anesthesiologist earns $405,000 per year and works around 40 to 50 hours per week. That being said, anesthesiology can also be incredibly stressful. Things can and will go wrong during surgery, and the patient's life will be in your hands. In addition, mid-level encroachment from CRNAs is also a growing concern. To learn more about the issue of mid-level encroachment, be sure to check out our video PA and NP versus MD and DO, link in the description. Number 9 on our list and the 16th most competitive specialty is is internal medicine with a total of 37 points. Internal medicine is the specialty that deals with the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of a broad and extensive number of diseases that affect adult patients. It is also the gateway to fellowship in a variety of fields, including cardiology, gastroenterology, oncology, and nephrology, to name a few. After medical school, internal medicine residency is three years. As a specialty, internal medicine offers tremendous flexibility. If you want to work as a hospitalist, taking care of admitted patients, you can do that straight after I am residency. If you want to do primary care in an outpatient clinic, that's common too. If you'd like to specialize and further your interest with something more focused like cardiology or gastroenterology, there's a clear path for that as well. The lifestyle of an internist is also generally favorable. As a hospitalist, the one week on, one week off model is very common, and outpatient internists often work regular business hours five days a week. That being said, IM is in the bottom quartile of compensation. The average internal medicine doctor earns approximately $264,000 per year, and works an average of 55 hours per week. In addition, administrative tasks such as charting and computer work often take up a much larger portion of an internal medicine physician's day compared to other specialties. Number 8 on our list and the 17th in competitiveness is pathology with a total of 31 points. Pathology is the field of medicine concerned with the study of body tissues and body fluids. They examine specimens to give tissue diagnoses as well as manage all of the clinical labs ordered by other physicians, from microbiology to hematology to chemistry and everything between. Between. To become a pathologist, you must complete three to four years of residency after medical school depending on which pathway you choose. The majority of pathology residents complete combined anatomical and clinical pathology residency, which is four years long. However, there are separate anatomic and clinical residency programs as well, which are three years long. Pathology is known for having a great lifestyle, with the average pathologist making approximately $334,000 per year and working an average of 47 hours per week. If you don't enjoy hands-on patient care, you can also take comfort in knowing that pathologists spend much of their time in the lab reviewing specimens and have very limited interaction with patients. With that in mind, some pathologists do end up missing the patient care aspect of being a physician. In addition, advancements in artificial intelligence and machine learning are likely to have a significant impact on the field in the coming years. Although it is unlikely that computers and algorithms will replace pathologists, they would likely have a profound effect on the way pathologists work, and nobody knows what the downstream effects will be. Number 7 on our list and the 
the 18th in competitiveness is child neurology with a total of 30 points. Child neurology is the field of medicine focusing on disorders of the brain, spinal cord, peripheral nerve, and muscle, affecting infants, children, and adolescents. To become a child neurologist, you must complete five years of residency training after medical school. This is broken down into two years of general pediatrics, followed by three years of pediatric neurology. Child neurology is an incredibly rewarding field. You have the opportunity to help children through a variety of neurological conditions and see them improve over time. In addition, some of the most common conditions you encounter as a child neurologist, such as epilepsy and headache disorders, can resolve on their own as a patient ages. That being said, as a child neurologist, you will also see a variety of neurodegenerative diseases and cancers with poor prognoses. This can weigh heavily on patients, families, and physicians, as delivering bad news to the patient and their family is not uncommon. These conversations are always difficult, no matter how experienced of a physician you are. In terms of compensation, child neurologists make an average of $253,000 per year. Number six on our list, and the 19th in competitiveness, is neurology with a total of 29 points. Neurologists are physicians that specialize in the non-surgical management of a variety of central and peripheral nervous system disorders. They manage everything from headaches and migraines to the most devastating and incurable diseases, such as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, and Huntington's disease. Strokes, which are the fifth leading cause of death and first leading cause of disability in the US, are also diagnosed and treated by neurologists. To become a neurologist, you must complete four years of neurology residency. In terms of lifestyle, about 80% of neurology is outpatient. This means that you are less likely to work weekends and more likely to have a regular eight to five practice. It should be noted, however, that most private practice neurologists do have to take call for local hospitals. Neurology is also in the lower third of specialties with regards to compensation at $301,000 per year. This is in large part because neurologists deal with primarily chronic illnesses and there are fewer procedures in neurology compared to other specialties. Number five is physical medicine and rehabilitation or PMNR with a total of 21 points. This places the specialty at 20th in terms of competitiveness. PMNR is the jack of all trades specialty focusing on both inpatient and outpatient management of non-operative orthopedics and neuro rehabilitation. These are the primary physicians for certain nervous system and non-surgical orthopedic disorders offering both medical and procedural treatment modalities. After medical school, PMNR residency is four years long. One of the advantages of PMNR is that it is heavily team focused. You have the opportunity to work with PTs, OTs, and speech therapists on a regular basis, in addition to case management and liaisons to help coordinate care. The lifestyle is generally favorable as well, with the average PMNR physician earning $322,000 per year and working an average of 45 hours per week. That being said, PMNR is slower paced and requires a great deal of patience. You have to be able to enjoy the small victories and endure the ups and downs of treatment and management as patients aren't generally getting back to 100% of their baseline functional status. Number four on our list and the 21st most competitive specialty out of 24 is emergency medicine with a total of 19 points. Emergency medicine is the specialty concerned with treating patients who are acutely ill with urgent healthcare needs. This includes treating acute conditions like myocardial infarctions or heart attacks, exacerbations of chronic health conditions, stabilizing patients involved in trauma, and more. Emergency medicine residency varies from three to four years in duration depending on the program. To learn more about the pros and cons of each type of program, be sure to check out our So You Want to Be an Emergency Medicine Doctor link in the description. In terms of lifestyle, EM doctors typically work three to four days per week and have the remainder of the week off. They also tend to do shift work, meaning that they clock in and out and don't take work home with them. The average EM physician works around 46 hours per week and earns approximately $373,000 per year. That being said, emergency medicine physicians experience some of the highest rates of burnout. Some contributing factors include working on the front line, consistent high intensity and stress, unpredictability, the increasing time required for charting at the expense of patient interaction, and irregular circadian rhythm. There's also a fear of litigation looming over your head given the higher rates of malpractice claims compared to the average physician. Number three is psychiatry, with a total of 18 points, putting it as 22nd in competitiveness. Psychiatry is the field of medicine focused on understanding and treating mental health disorders and psychological distress. After medical school, psychiatry residency is four years in duration. If you enjoy spending time with patients, psychiatry is one of the few specialties where you can regularly have 45 to 60 minute appointments. You'll also have the opportunity to see your patients develop and improve with time, which can be incredibly gratifying. Psychiatrists also often enjoy a hard to beat lifestyle. The average psychiatrist earns $287,000 and works an average of 47 hours per week. Psychiatry isn't without its drawbacks, however. Due to the nature of treating mental illness, psychiatry can 
often be incredibly emotionally draining. In addition, psychiatrists often deal with difficult patient populations, such as those with substance use disorders, severe mental illness, or personality disorders that can be challenging to manage. Number two on our list is pediatrics with a total of 14 points. Pediatrics is the field of medicine providing care for babies, children, and adolescents from birth up to the age of 25. After medical school, pediatrics residency is three years in duration, after which you'll have several options for subspecialization, including pediatric hematology oncology, cardiology, and gastroenterology, to name a few. Pediatrics is a unique field in that you get to make an impact early in your patient's life that can compound to yield tremendous changes over a long period. Although pediatrics is consistently one of the lowest paid medical specialties, at around $244,000 per year, there is a high amount of flexibility in the field. After all, these are the doctors that prioritize children. Even in residency, your program will often be more understanding of things like maternity or paternity leave than most other specialties. Last but not least, the number one least competitive specialty in 2022 is family medicine with a total of 10 points. Family medicine is the center of primary care. These are the generalists of generalists. Unlike other specialties that focus on a particular organ, disease, or age range, family medicine physicians see the full spectrum of patients, from young to old, healthy to unhealthy, and everything in between. To become a family medicine physician, you must complete three years of family medicine residency after medical school. Family medicine has a lot to offer relative to other specialties. First off, you have a great deal of flexibility within family medicine. If you want to deliver babies all day, you can do that. If you want to practice in the emergency department, you can do that too. Or maybe you want to practice inpatient as a hospitalist. All these and more are possible with family medicine. Family medicine physicians also have desirable schedules, usually working regular 9 to 5 business hours with minimal, if any, call. They also have amazing access to longitudinal care and can see patients from the time that they're born through adulthood. In terms of compensation, family medicine doctors have an average annual salary of $236,000 and work an average of 53 hours per week. Were you surprised by any of the specialties on this list? Let me know with a comment below. Don't let the data fool you though. Just because these are the 10 least competitive specialties doesn't mean they aren't hard to get into. Every specialty in medicine is competitive, just some more so than others. Particularly if you want to get the best training at a top program, you'll have to be a stellar candidate. Our team at Med School Insiders has served on admissions committees at top medical schools and residency programs, and we specialize in getting you where you want to be. And we don't rely on wishful thinking or false promises. We've painstakingly developed our proprietary systems that are designed with one purpose in mind, helping you become the successful doctor you've always dreamed of. We've recruited the best in the industry and provided them with the most powerful tools in getting you where you want to be. Our results speak for themselves, and it's why we've become the fastest growing company in the space with the highest satisfaction ratings. See for yourself and learn more at medschoolinsiders.com. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the top five most competitive specialties or one of the videos on our So You Want To Be playlist. Much love, and I'll see you guys there.